There's nothing worse than spending 10, 20, 30 plus hours 3D printing a helmet only to realize that it's scaled wrong, either too small or too big. And I have 3D printed a lot of helmets over the years, and two of my favorite tips that I like to give is using cosplay calipers to properly measure your head when it comes to scaling your helmets. And the other is creating a thin cross-section slice of the helmet that you can then test print to verify that everything's gonna fit. And there's a new free web based helmet scaling tool that I'm going to be looking at in today's video that incorporates both of these methods plus a whole lot more. This tool is seriously impressive and if you print helmets you're definitely going to want to check this out to prevent issues just like this. I also wanted to provide you all with a super quick update one of my previous videos where I swapped out the hot end assembly at my Centauri Carbon with a custom hot swappable print head version that I printed myself while I ended up having some issues with getting that to continually print after running that for a good number of prints. And I ended up getting my order from Heartforge and getting that installed. And after getting everything leveled, this is printing so well. And I'm gonna be printing most of the parts for this helmet build with this updated extruder assembly. And this free web app that we're gonna be looking at is called RefMaker, and it's made by White Space Props here on YouTube. They'll have a link to their channel and to their full tutorial video over on their page. But this web app is so well made. I'm honestly blown away that it's a free tool that you can find online, and it's really well put together. So once you go to RefMaker.app for the first time, it's gonna provide you with this welcome message, and it's going to give you a little mini tutorial on how to get started and one of the very first things that they recommend is getting the measurements from the front to back of your head as well as from side to side using something like cosplay calipers here so i'll have links to my cosplay calipers down below where you can get these printed it's a really quick one hour print these snap together and then you can capture the measurements here from the front to the back of your head as well as from side to side right above your ear is what they recommend here as part of this web app you're also going to end up taking your helmet file and uploading it directly to the web app to scale along with this virtual head. But one cool thing is that they recommend uploading a .3MF file so that we can actually generate that sliced version of it that we can then test print later. And I know from grabbing my head measurements with my cosplay calipers and a ruler or measuring tape that the width of my head is about 6.25 inches, which I'm going to bump up in millimeter scale ever so slightly to 159 millimeters. And then the head length, which again is the front to back of your cranium here, is 8 0.125 inches for me, which again, I'll bump up to about 207 millimeters. You also have different head options to choose from. I'm using the male head. If you were a female and wanted to use the female head option, you can use that. There's also a default head, or you can upload your own custom head file, which uh, I'll do here in just a few minutes. There's also quick presets that you can choose from as well. Uh, also, it's it's interesting to note that I apparently have a really large head. I'm uh, My measurements fit within the extra large 90th percentile. <laughs> Go figure, a content creator with a big head. They also have tools built into this that you can save these profiles, which is so cool. Or if you wanted to create multiple profiles, you can. So here, I can save this as a custom profile. So I'm gonna say this is my UJ head. Uh, custom and save and it will save that here in this web application and assuming you have cookies and all that up and running it should remember this however one extra cool feature that they have built into this is that you can not only download this 3d version of your scaled head which I would also recommend but at the very top if you go under presets you can download your presets that you've created and save them to your computer so the next time you come back here if it doesn't remember this information Information, you can re-upload it and get right back to scaling your helmets. So once you've got your head all sorted here, the next step is we're gonna actually upload our helmet file. Now again, you can upload an STL file. However, they recommend a .3MF because we're gonna be able to take advantage of that slicing functionality to create our own test print. Now I'm gonna be attempting to print a Daredevil Born Again helmet from Yosh Studios. And I'm purposefully doing this because it is a notoriously tricky thing to scale these like skull cap size helmets because you need them to be snug, but not too snug or else they're not going to fit and too loose they're just going to be wobbling around on your head. Now thankfully Yoast Studios creates a together version of this file for scaling purposes that has everything combined together. So I'm going to use that and then export that out as a .3MF file. 
One other thing that you can do if you're running into performance issues with either your computer or the web app processing the helmet file into the .3mf file, because it might be a rather large file size or have a whole lot of polygon counts, all that good stuff. If you right click on the model here in your slicer, you can click on simplify model and then reduce that in half. Again, you're just gonna be modifying the geometry, like simplifying the overall structure of the actual helmet to just reduce the file size. This should not, in theory, impact the actual scaling and all that other good stuff when it comes to this. So I'm gonna apply this and then we can export this out as a 3MF. Then once we're back in Roughmaker, I can upload that file and here it will be brought in. But you'll notice it doesn't quite fit my head correctly. So what I'm gonna do is go down to the bottom. There's a fix orientation function and you can play around with these different values depending on how your helmet comes in until it's uh, about right. Then we can use the uh, options at the top section here to, again, I can adjust this to where it sits on my head, where it's sitting up high or low. And then I can also tilt it forward and back and move it forward and back. Then most importantly, at the very top is the scaling function. Now, by default, everything's gonna scale uniformly. And I think for the most part, that's what everybody's gonna use. But it is nice that you can come in here and tweak everything on the X and Y and Z if you really needed to. But I'm gonna leave mine as is. Now, I know from working with Yoshi's files in the past, typically 96% is perfect for me with their standard size scaling that they run for their helmets. So here I can see that this should fit, but it is going to be very snug. And we can confirm this by using the section view function here where it's gonna cut out the head and we can see exactly how this is gonna line up. Now I can go through the front to back from side to side and see exactly how this is gonna fit. And if anything is rubbing up against any areas of the model and potentially gonna impact the overall scaling. Now, I again think that this is gonna be just a tad bit too small. So I'm gonna bump this up to 97%. And then we're gonna move over into the actual ring functionality, which I think is the coolest part of all of this. This really simplifies this whole process. So here you can see it's going around the very top, which would be good, like this is a good ring test, but I wanna lower this down because I know that somewhere around my head and nose area is where our uh, the ringing is actually gonna come into play here. So if I tilt this as well, so I'm gonna tilt this at an angle a little bit and I'm gonna lower this until it generates right around the bridge of my nose, like right at the tip of my nose. Now, one other thing that we're seeing here is because this helmet isn't fully connected all the way around, that's gonna pose a little bit of a trouble when it comes to actually test printing this. But first, let's download our little sliver test print here by clicking the download ring function. Once I brought this into the slicer, I can now let this get this seated flat on the build plate and this should be scaled accordingly to that 97% scale. Now, here's where that gappage by the ears comes into play. And I saw this as a tip from Whitespace Props where he was using these little geometric shapes to further continue and create one completed shape outline. This is such an awesome idea and I can't believe I never thought of doing this previously. In the past, I just sort of gave up on running test prints like this if I didn't have a fully connected piece. Then once you've got everything here together, I like to actually merge all of the parts together and assemble, and then I can send this off to the printer. Now, I actually ended up printing this at the original 96% scale, and it fits, but it is just gonna be, I think, way too snug, especially towards the sides and the face, like it's just not gonna be enough space for me to properly be able to print and wear this. So I reprinted it at 97 and 97.5 and the 97.5, sorry, this looks awkward. I gotta remember it's at an angle here going down. This again is going to be snug, but should fingers crossed fit properly. Now, before I go off and try and print this, I just wanna double check this by uploading a custom 3D scan of my head that I have. And I mentioned this earlier that you can come back to the head preview section and upload your own custom file here. My head also imported wonkily here and I want it to be positioned correctly so that the front is facing the actual front. So I'm gonna tweak this ever so slightly here and I think mine needs to be about 85. 
84, yeah, 84 percent here on the Z axis. And now if I come back over to the helmet fit, I can reposition everything to see exactly how this is going to fit on the 3D scan of my head. Now, I might have to further tweak this by rotating the helmet further to fit my, my 3D scan or just reposition it up and down until it's at the right position. But I believe our test fitting at 97.5% should work. So let's get that printed over on the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, which it just so happens that Elegoo is the sponsor of today's video. They are the makers of the Centauri Carbon. And if you're not already familiar, this is a budget-friendly Core XY fully enclosed 3D printer that prints amazing and is super fast with its printing capabilities. Elegoo also has a ton of print profiles pre-built out in their slicer for you to work with, which I'm using their Rapid PLA print profile for all of these prints. And as of the time of recording this video, the printer is still on sale, coming in at under $300 at $279. This is a great deal for an incredible 3D printer. I'm also going to be uploading my cosplay calipers to nextprint.com, which is Elegoo's new file sharing website, where they're going to pay you for your 3D files. And for more information about any of Elegoo's products, you'll find links to those down below. Look at how good this helmet turned out. I, yeah, I, I still need to go back and reprint the back in the same red filament color, but this turned out so good, printed all at a 0.2 layer height here, and I still need to get the magnets installed, but let's give this a fit test. All right, so I got the magnets installed and the super glue should be dried, so let's give this a test fit to see if everything printed correctly. That worked so good. Oh my goodness. I still need to get the eyes installed here, but this makes scaling helmets that much easier. And again, it's a completely free online tool that you can use made by a member of the 3D printing community, which is just incredible. I'll also obviously have links down below where you can try out RefMaker app for yourself. Again, this is made by Whitespace Props. I'll have links to their channel down below as well. Consider giving them a tip or donation for all of their hard work with this, again, free maker tool that is gonna allow you to more easily scale your helmets. I also wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support, me making videos just like this one here. If you're interested in more information about my Patreon, you can find links to that down below. But let me know in the comments what you think about this new free web-based tool for scaling your helmets. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all, and I'll see you next time.